All right, so the next tutorial I'm going to show you is uh, extremely useful for studio projects, obviously, um, getting contours for your site. So this is why we need to download this uh, DEM image here. If you look at the DEM image in your, uh, um, in your layers or table of contents, you'll see that it has a range of values, high and low. This is your ele these are basically your spot elevations of the DE image. And almost always, the DEM image is in meters. This is extremely, extremely important to remember. These numbers here, if you're downloaded from the USGS website that I showed you guys, is going to be in meters, 173 meters through 174 meters. This is extremely important when you want to bring this information to AutoCAD or Rhino later, because you're not going to want your contours to be in meters. You're going to want your contours to be cut in feet. And I'll show you guys how to set that up um, now. So first, we need to pick a site that we want to focus on. Let's say we want to focus on, let me go turn my buildings layer real quick, just so I have an area. Let's say we want to focus on, uh, let's find an interesting layer. Um, one thing that might be worth doing is to change the gradient of this background. If you click on the uh, gradient there, you can choose a color ramp. And you can choose one that has a lot more variation in its tone, such as this one. And you begin, begin to like, understand the, really the, what's going on topographically in this region here. Um, let's, say, let's say you want to get the contours for, let's say you're interested in this, uh, this interchange here. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of grading in this area here. Let's say you want to get some contours for this area here. So first you set an extents of the area that you want to cut contours for. In general, try to keep your extents pretty uh, small. If you, if, you keep your, if you make your extents this big, it's going to cut contours for the entire site here, and it's going to crash ArcMap. So just keep that in mind. When you pick an area that you want to cut, cut, cut contours for, um, let's say like this area here, set a bookmark. It's a great bookmark. Call this, uh, I'll call this one site, for instance. That way, if we lose our location, again, you can just go back to your bookmark and just have that site uh, located. Um, to cut contours, you're going to need to make sure you have your 3D analyst and your spatial analyst extensions enabled. If you go to customize up here, there's an option called extensions. Uh, just make sure your 3D analyst and your spatial analyst options are checked. If they aren't checked, then they won't work. You're going to want to go to the Arc Toolbox, which is this little red button um, uh, in your main toolbar right here. It's called the Arc Toolbox. If you click on that, it's going to give you uh, this menu here. I'm just going to drag it out. If I can drag it out. I'll just pin it. Actually, I won't pin it. Um, and these are basically your, uh, your tools. You can do all your analysis, all your uh, conversion, all your uh, cool functionality is all within this set of tools here. I'm going to show you a lot of tools this semester, um, but today we're going to focus on one. It's going to be the contouring tool. You can get that in two locations, either in the 3D analyst line here or the uh, spatial analyst line down here. Both of them work equally as well. You can choose either one. In this case, I'll choose 3D analyst. Expand that option. You're going to want to go to the raster surface option. Expand that, and you'll see there is an option called Contour. Now double-click that, and it gives you the contouring function tool right here. It's going to ask for several inputs. So the first line says Input Raster. The raster will be your DEM image, this one here. And the easiest way to bring it in is you can either select it from the drop-down menu. It's only going to find the raster images that are within your data set. So it, as you can see, it doesn't show any of the shape files that I have there. So it's only going to choose that one. You can also just drag it like that into the line there, and that will work uh, as well. There it goes. It's going to ask for a location of your polyline features, uh, where it wants to save. This is something I recommend you do in general, is just to leave this as your default. Don't mess with this line here. Sometimes uh, uh, it won't work if I change this line for some reason. It, Contours like to be saved into a what is known as a geo database, this .gdb uh, here. If I save it as a shapefile outside of it, sometimes 
it doesn't work, and I'm not sure why. So I've given up guessing why, and all I do, I just, I just leave it like this. And the thing is, you, after you're done with that, you can export the data again into the folder that you have all your information saved to. Again, it's not a big deal. So just leave this line as is. That's my recommendation. Contour interval, that's, do you want one foot contours, two foot contours, three foot contours, five foot contours, 10 foot contours? In this case, I think we can do, let's do five foot contours. It just kind of, you're just kind of looking here, kind of like determining what's the best resolution. If you do one foot contours, it might be too dense um, to be useful. Uh, base contour, always set it to zero. That means it's gonna cut it above uh, the zero datum or C level. And then Z factor. This is extremely important right here, this number. If you just leave this as is, it's going to cut your contours in meters. It, it, it explains it all on the side here, basically. You can read if you want. All you need to know, in my opinion, is uh, if you want your contours to be in feet, remember this number, 3.28084, okay? Remember this number, 3.28084. This is the conversion factor uh, in order to get from uh, meters to feet. There are 3.28084 feet in one meter. That's, that's kind of the, the rule there. People kind of estimate that there's usually three feet in a meter. This is actually the exact number um, that you want to use. Okay? So in this case, the contour interval means five feet? Exactly. Contour interval means that you're going to cut five foot contours. Five, 10, 15, 20. If you do three, it's going to be three, six, nine, 12. This is your choice. This is whatever makes sense for your project. Okay, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna click okay yet. Don't click okay yet, that's dangerous. Um, don't do it. You need to go to the environments button down here. Click on that button. What we need to do is we need to set up the, uh, the workspace so that it cuts the contours within our viewport here. So first thing I'm gonna set is the output coordinates. And make sure you set your output coordinate system to be the same as display. As you can see, when I click on same as display, it fills in the coordinate system as your NAD 1983 State Plain Ohio feet. That's the key part here is the feet. If your coordinate system is in feet and you set your output coordinates as feet, everything's going to be in feet. If you don't set this, set this, sometimes it might not work. Okay? So that's output coordinates. Next. Processing extent. This is the most important line. Make sure you set your processing extent to same as display. What this means is going to basically cut the contouring process within this frame here. If you don't set this line as same as display, it's going to cut contours for the entire uh, DEM, DEM image that you downloaded. Sometimes it can be really big. Sometimes it can be really, really, really big. So. <laughs> Saying this is going to basically manage your data in a smart way. Next, go to XY resolution and tolerance. And this is just something that I've kind of like figured out after years of trial and error is if you just set everything to one centimeter, it gives you the smoothest possible result. Sometimes if you don't set this resolution option, your contours could kind of turn out looking jaggedy or weird or kind of strange looking. So setting this to a low value, like one centimeter, is a good way to make sure that your contours are nice and uh, smooth. And once you set that up, that's it. These three lines, output coordinates, processing extent, XY resolution and tolerance. Make sure those are set correctly. Click OK, click OK, and then just let it work. So I'm gonna... Okay, so it popped up. So if I turn off my image here, you'll see you have the contours uh, in the background uh, cut within this frame that we set previously. So uh, these are five foot contours. If I look at it closely, um, I think we can, get, we can get a higher resolution from this. Right now, this, I, I, these five foot contours looks a little thin. I think we get a bit, bit more of a resolution. Let's do one foot contours. So let's try it again. So I'm gonna go back to the site view. So I have my bookmark again. I'm doing the same exact process. And this time I'm gonna show you the second option, which is in the spatial analyst toolbar here. So same exact, it has the same exact functionality. It just has, you can just go about it two ways. Uh, you can go to the surface button here, 
in the spatial analyst tools, surface, and there's also a contour option here. So double click on that. As you can see, it's the same, same exact stuff as previously, so uh, drag your raster in there. It's gonna ask just leave this line uh, as is. That's my recommendation. In this case, I'll do one as my interval, so I'll do one foot. Set your Z factor to 3.28084. Just remember that number, that's all you gotta do. Just remember it. Um, environments. Um, output coordinates, same as display. Processing extent, same as display. XY resolution, just set to one centimeter. Okay, okay. And just let it work. And uh, there you go. Now this is a lot more of a useful data set uh, for contours. And then you can go back and change your symbology options to make it appear uh, like a gradient. So if you double click on the contour layer here, um, you can go to symbology, quantities, and change the value to contour. This, is, this number contour here is going to be essentially the elevation of that contour. So if you just click on apply, you'll see that it turns into a, a cool looking gradient. Um, and this is good for like exporting to Illustrator um, and getting your contour lines. Any questions? All right, now we got contours. And I'm gonna show how to bring this into round in the correct way. Um, so <laughs> the way we do that is before you export this to AutoCAD, and the way you generally do that is you go to, you right click on an object and go to data, export to CAD. This is, how, this is how you bring all your information to something like AutoCAD or Rhino. Don't, don't touch that button yet, just don't touch it. Um, you need to edit this data set in a way so that uh, Rhino can read the elevations of these numbers here. So these numbers here you see on the side of the, on the contour column represent the elevation of each line. Um, but if you bring this into Rhino now, it's just gonna bring in a flat, uh, flat 2D drawing. But we want these contours to have their elevation value uh, actually project itself in Rhino so that the elevation actually is at 787 or 803 or that kind of thing. The way you do that is you open your attribute table, you go to this option on the side of your attribute table here to get some uh, functions, you want to add a field. Click on this add field button right there. And this is extremely important. Type in elevation. And then uh, set the type to um, a double. Sometimes you can, you can just look at this list of numbers here and they're all integers, as you can see here. Um, so that's fine, you can, you can set it as a long integer or a short integer. I just always default to double, and double is basically just a very, very precise numerical format. If you have decimal points, say in this case, like this line here, shape value, it will preserve those decimal points. If you did, short, if you did something like long integer and you try to, uh, um, copy this layer here, it's gonna get rid of all the precision in the decimal point layer, and that, you don't want to do that. So I always set my uh, numerical values to double. So once that's set, click OK. You have a new line in your uh, table here. Right click on the table, go to the field calculator. Just click on yes. And then you want to, you're, you're gonna see it's gonna have you a bunch of functionality of terms of how to set what elevation equals. All you need to do is make your elevation equal to the contour and so all you need to do is click, double click on the contour option here. As you can see it says elevation equals contour. Click OK, like that. So now, when that's, when that, once that's set up, you're done. You're busy done. So now just get out of here, right click on this guy, go to data, export to CAD. You'll automatically put your contour layer um, in the export options and you can also bring in other layers. So let's say you wanna bring in, say the, uh, uh, like the, the buildings layer, for instance. Um, you can also export that simultaneously um, as with your contours. Just leave your output type to a regular DDOEG uh, 2013, that's perfectly fine. But you wanna make sure you set your output file to a location and I always just default to my desktop. So let's call this Ohio export. Uh, before you do anything else, click on the environments tab. This is also extremely important when you export to CAD, make sure you set your output coordinates to same as display. See, I'm doing the exact same thing for every single one of these um, uh, functions, is make sure my output coordinates is same as display. That means it's gonna preserve the coordinate system that 
is part of this ArcMec document and basically preserve the units as feet. And then also make sure you click on uh, the cartography button here and make that also same as display. So output coordinates and cartography. And also I highly recommend make as well setting your processing extent to also same as display as well. That way it'll only export what you see within your window. If you don't set that, sometimes it'll just export everything and you'll have a CAD file for the entire state of Ohio if, you, if that's what your heart desires, but people are different. Um, then just click OK and just let that uh, work. Um, yes, the numbers you see on the line here, these are the, uh, the elevation above sea level for this range of contours. One thing to note is if you look at the comparison of these numbers to the original DEM image, you kind of see that the range of these is much higher than these. That's because we took this number and multiplied it by 3.28084. So you see the magnitude of these numbers and these numbers feel like about three times difference. So that means you did the, you did the process correctly. Now when you export your information to AutoCAD, it always automatically adds the AutoCAD layer into your ArcMac document. Um, and you see that's what we named our AutoCAD layer. You don't really need that anymore, so just remove it. Every time I export, I just remove the AutoCAD layer. Um, and before I do anything else, I'm just gonna save my map. I'm gonna call this Ohio. Okay, let's get out of here. Let's go to Rhino real quick. So uh, in Rhino, let's import. So type in import. Go to import your CAD, uh, Ohio export DWG. So double click on that guy. And uh, you'll see now that your contours now have elevation associated with it. So now you can use this to like model your site and all that fun stuff. And yes, this, these, these values here will be uh, whatever the number is above sea level. So let's, let's, let's just do an example here. Like if the number, if the shape file does not have an elevation value, it'll always come in at the zero elevation. And so let's say, let's just look at the magnitude of these contours. They're within, they're about 800-ish. So if I just take any contour and I just move it down, like negative 800, oops, negative 800, you see that it comes basically at the zero level. So now you know that these are at the correct elevation. Um, so that is how you bring elevation data into Rhino. So you guys wanna know how to turn this set of contours into a nice beautiful surface. So you can trim your surface and you can put your building on your surface and you can do all the fun things they can do with a surface. You guys just, just want surfaces. All right, I'll tell you how to do it. Here's what you need to do first. Before you do, do anything in Grasshopper, set a new layer in Rhino and call that bounding box. Because that bounding box is going to be what turns into a surface. So set that as a layer. I'm just give it a color. I'm going really fast here, so sorry, but that's the way I work, that way I roll. All right, so let's see here. There's not, so you see what's going on here? There's not much information in terms of contours on this edge, so there might be a problem there. I might want to turn, you, might, you want your bounding box to cover a region with a good amount of contours. So I'm going to just reduce the size of this to cover that region right there. Um, okay, so the end result is we're gonna have a surface that uh, is within this region of your box. Okay, now, open Grasshopper. You wanna set your contours first, so the way you do that is you click on the curve uh, option here, right click on the curve, set multiple curves, right click on the contour layer, select objects, you select all your contours at once, hit enter, contours set in Grasshopper. Next, another, another curve, set your bounding box, set one curve, click on the bounding box, and now you're done, okay? To make sure that I don't accidentally move something, I'm just gonna turn off all my uh, layers that in uh, Rhino there's nothing selectable, but still in Grasshopper, it's just previewing in Grasshopper here, okay? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to move as little as possible because I tend to scroll around in Grasshopper a lot and it gets confusing, so I'm just gonna keep this on the side like that. I'm just gonna keep this steady like that, okay? So no more, no more scrolling around, all right? So what we need to do now is we need to turn this into a mesh. Not a surface, a mesh. We'll, we'll get to the surface soon. The easiest way to do that is to just explode the curve into points. 
by double typing the explode option there, this turns all the curves into a series of vertices. We don't need to look at this, just turn off the preview. Take the vertices as a vertices option here, flatten that list so that it just has puts all the vertices on one giant list. If you guys don't know what the difference between know how to manage the lists in Grasshopper, then you're screwed because that's pretty much the main thing to understand in terms of mastering Grasshopper's lists and sets. Type in Delaunay Mesh. Ooh, Delaunay Mesh. Good old Delaunay Mesh. Plug in your vertices to the points layer here and you get a ugly, ugly mesh. Ugh, oh, meshes. The worst possible thing that you can ever have in a Rhino model is a mesh. Can't trim it, can't do anything with it, it just makes your file slow. Yuck, yuck, yuck. But it's there, we need that. Turn it off, take your curve layer, turn that into a surface by typing in boundary surfaces like that. Plug that in there, now it's gonna turn that curve into a surface. We're gonna need to turn that surface into a series of points. So click, type in divide surface. What this does is turn, it turns that surface that we just made into a series of gridded points. And these points are gonna become the spot elevations that will make our surface. So the higher resolution you can make these points, the better. Just be careful that if there's too many points, it will just be too slow. So you gotta find a good balance here. Generally, my rule of thumb is I just get the dimensions of the surface by typing in dimensions, plugging into the surface so I get a UV value here. You could just plug in these UV values straight into the die surface, but it might be too big. So I'm just gonna type in a divide option. I'm gonna divide all the, the dimensions by two just to get a 50% um, option. And take this division option, copy and paste it. So I can also divide the V. Am I going fast enough for you guys? Fast enough? All right, plug in the U to the U value, plug in the V to the V value. Um, and just wait for that thing to finish uh, doing its thing. Yes, look at that. A nice mm, thing of points. Look at that, oh man, beautiful. Actually, that's probably too much. So I'm gonna actually turn that off and I'm gonna turn this to like a, a higher number, like four, for instance, or eh, 3.5. Okay, now we look at these points, it should, it's okay. It's, man, that's a lot of points. Sorry. All right, I set the value to 10, that's a little bit more of a reasonable resolution. Okay, now that you got your points, you got your elements, you got all your two things you need. You got your points, you got your mesh. Now what do you do? You type in mesh ray, mesh ray, look at that. What this does, it allows you to solve the intersection of a mesh and a series of vectors. The cool thing is, all you need to decide the vector is just a grid of points. Hmm. Oh, wait, look at these points here. I just gotta put these points in there like that. Okay, oh, I need a mesh. Oh, okay, I'll just plug in the mesh there. And now you need a vector. Okay, the direction is going to be up, right? Because these points are, if I look at the um, perspective view here. These points are below the actual contour, so we need a vector that goes up. So just type in a Z vector. I just double click and type in Z, you get a unit Z vector. Plug in that there, and what you're gonna see is a miracle. This is gonna be a miracle. Look at that, whoa. I'm sorry, I sound kinda sarcastic right now, but I'm just super excited because this is Grasshopper. Mm -hmm. um, okay. What you've done now is you set, essentially set a series of spot elevations, and then the last step you need to do is take these points, flatten your points, turn this off, type in surf from points. Wow, a surface that you can make just from points? All right, it's asking for a point uh, component and also asking for a U component. The U component is this number right here that you plugged into your U value. Let's put that in first. Um, actually, you're gonna need to do one little little function to this. You're gonna add you're gonna need to add one to this number. So just go to the u value um, and go to the expression editor and type in x plus one. Why? Um, I'm not gonna explain why. I don't have time to explain why. I'm almost out of time. 
Um, <laughs> plug that. So now that you have everything set up, plug in this to that. And there you go. Now, make a new layer. Bake it. Bake it, 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 bake it. Bake, bake, bake. Turn off your layers. Go back to your shaded view. <gasps> Look at that. You got a terrain model. Now you can put your building on the highway if you wanted to. Um, and because it's a surface, man, look at this. You can draw a box. <gasps> you can extrude that box. Trim or split. Split that box. Nice. So now you can, if you need to split your surface or whatever and do some some custom terrain modeling, there you go. And that, my friends, is how you impress your studio mates um, <laughs> the rest of the semester. And that is the end of the first day of class.